So we're going to be looking at resistance and current voltage graphs, as well as LEDs. Ohm's law states that the voltage across the conductor is directly proportional to the current through it, provided that the temperature is constant. So we can express this mathematically as voltage is proportional to current. So if we have a resistor and it has two volts across it and a current of 0.1 amps through it, if we were to double the voltage across that resistor, then the current through it would also double as the voltage is directly proportional to the current. This is assuming that the temperature has remained the same. So resistance is defined as the ratio of voltage to current or voltage per unit current or voltage divided by current. So this is the equation for resistance. It's important to note, though, that the resistance does not depend upon the voltage or current through it. The resistance of a conductor depends on the conductor itself and its dimensions. However, the voltage across a conductor and the current through a conductor does depend on the resistance of that conductor and how it's connected in the circuit. The unit of resistance is the ohm given by the symbol capital Omega. You also need to know the definition of the ohm, and that comes from the definition of resistance. So an ohm equals the unit of voltage, which is a volt, divided by the unit of current, which is ampere. So one ohm equals one volt per ampere. One ohm of resistance is equal to one volt of potential difference per ampere of current. And resistance occurs due to the collisions between electrons and the fixed positive ions present. The electrons in a conductor cannot flow freely. Their motion is impeded, restricted due to the positive ions. And these collisions that they make with them give rise to resistance. If the temperature of a conductor increases, then the resistance of that conductor increases. And this is because the higher the temperature, the greater the vibrational energy of the positive ions and the greater the kinetic energy of the electrons. And so the positive ions vibrate faster and with larger amplitudes. So as a result of that, there'll be more collisions per second between the electrons and positive ions. And if there's more collisions per second, the resistance of your conductor increases. We're now going to look at current voltage graphs, first for a metal wire or a resistor. And the graph looks like this. So it's a straight line through the origin. The negative voltage and current is when the battery connections have been reversed. So the straight line through the origin tells us then that the voltage is directly proportional to the current. So the metal wire or, uh, or a fixed resistor obeys Ohm's law. So we say it's an ohmic conductor. And the resistance of that metal wire is constant. If we now consider a filament lamp, the graph looks like this. Because it's not showing a straight line through the origin, it's not obeying Ohm's law, so it's a non-ohmic conductor. It's important to note that the filament in a lamp is made up of a coiled metal wire. Uh, so you should expect it then to obey Ohm's law. But when current is flowing through the filament, the temperature of the wire is not remaining the same. It's increasing 
and as a result of the temperature increasing the resistance of the wire is increasing if the resistance for filament lamp remained the same it would follow this line the dashed line however as you increase the voltage across the filament lamp as more current flows the temperature increases so the resistance increases so you actually get less current flowing through it than you would expect if the resistance had remained constant so the gradient of the current voltage graph is decreasing implying that the resistance is increasing now Look at the current voltage graph for an LED, a light emitting diode, and the graph looks like this. When the diode is connected in reverse bias, so that is in the opposite direction to the terminals of the battery, so we can see that no current will flow through the LED. When we connect the LED in forward bias, then current will flow at a voltage just short of one volt. And if you remember, diodes only allow current to flow through it in one direction when it's connected in forward bias. And for the LED, when it's connected in forward bias, it will emit light. Because the graph is not a straight line through the origin for an LED, it does not obey. Ohm's law, so it's a non ohmic conductor. And when there's no current through the LED, then we can say the resistance of the LED is very large. We can say approaching infinity. When there is current through the LED, then we can say the resistance of the LED is very small or negligible, that is approximately zero we're now going to look at the current voltage graph for a ntc thermistor that is a negative temperature coefficient thermistor that means as the temperature of the thermistor increases its resistance decreases so the graph looks like this and you can see it doesn't follow a straight line through the origin so the current is not directly proportional to the voltage so it doesn't obey ohm's law so it's a non-ohmic conductor and the reason why it doesn't obey ohm's law is because the temperature is not constant because as current flows through the thermistor the temperature of the thermistor increases but as i said before because it's a negative temperature coefficient thermistor as the temperature increases, its resistance decreases. If the resistance remained constant, then the graph would follow the dashed line. So what you are seeing is that as the voltage increases, the temperature of the thermistor is increasing. So its resistance is decreasing. So you're actually getting more current than expected as a result. So the feature of the graph is that the gradient is increasing, indicating that the resistance of the thermistor is decreasing. And we're finally going to look at some benefits of LEDs. One, they're more efficient than filament lamps, so you're going to have less energy wasted. They also work with low voltages, so draw less current than a filament lamp so they have lower energy requirements and they're also more robust than filament lamps so they have a much longer working life a common use of leds is in traffic signal lights and the advantage being that if one fails the others will still remain on so you do not have to replace LEDs as often as you would if you had a single filament lamp. So they're more cost effective as well.